Flash games, basically mobile quality games that we fondly remember because they had an indie vibe to them. And you know I'm all about those indie vibes, yo. From addicting games to cool math games, there was a variety of fast time wasters and pure gold best game ever made to keep you busy. But soon, we started seeing more ambitious projects, uh, from Neopets to Homestar Runner and everything in between. Adventure Quest. Adventure Quest is in between. Adventure Quest is a Flash-based RPG which released in 2002. So we're, we're not even talking about Adobe Flash, we're talking about Macromedia Flash. While every other game had that arcade bubblegum feeling, Adventure Quest aimed to create a fully fleshed out world with a variety of monsters, weapons, and pets, and a story-filled environment with expansive lore. So they named the world Lore. All right, we can just check that one right off the box. With all of this effort, it was almost like they were trying to conquer the Flash game world directly. All right, that Moglin is pretty cute. Maybe this could compete with the great. I never played Adventure Quest. I don't even think I heard of it until I got an onslaught of requests to check it out, thanks to me checking out other web games. But fortunately, my pal Negative Legends suggested we check it out for a collaboration. So let's break out our Flash compatible browsers and check out a Flash game that's certainly not the best. I just wanted to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. It's 2020 and I'm here to make the claim that this year is all about learning new things and more importantly, starting that thing you've been talking about for years. Fortunately, as you begin to spread your creative wings, Skillshare has you covered. Skillshare is an online learning community that empowers curious and creative people like you to explore, create, and of course, get new skills. With classes designed for people with lives, Skillshare wants you to learn without uprooting your life. Most classes are under 60 minutes, made up of short lessons to fit any schedule. And at just $10 a month, Skillshare is absolutely not going to break the bank. Members get access to thousands of classes created for the creative and entrepreneurial person and everyone else in between. There's tons to explore from how to make a podcast to taking Instagram worthy photos. And for those of you who've been talking about starting a YouTube channel for the past few years, you can start right now, even if you don't have great equipment. The iPhone videography shoot and edit video using your iPhone aims to help you create great looking video using just what you have in your pocket. So do it now. Now's your time to start that thing. Just do it and help yourself out a little bit by clicking the link in the description to get two months free of Skillshare Premium. So try it out and explore your creativity. Adventure Quest began in the far away year of 2002, which means it's 18 years old now. I'm getting old, please don't track my hairline. Created by Arctix Entertainment, which was created by Adam Bond, Adventure Quest was created to accomplish Adam's goal of making a game 100 people would play. Early 2000s internet clout was pure. Adam grew up a registered gamer, and when his dad suggested he make his own game, Adam said, okay. After self-teaching himself with software books and more, Adam kept experimenting until he made Adventure Quest, which his friends said totally sucked. But once he put it on BattleOn.com and made Adventure Quest his real job, that friend probably said some dumb <laughs> like, get a real job. But I wouldn't know anything about that. By 2002, Adventure Quest was launched, and by 2005, it had over 20,000 players. Quite a bit more than that original goal. Adventure Quest's world is a pretty standard fantasy setting with some anime-style flair. You explore lore through point-and-click-style maps, which can activate text-heavy cutscenes, bring you to new locations like shops, and navigate the world to find quests. If you've played an RPG, it's pretty much what you'd expect, but most of the quests in Adventure quests are just a series of turn-based combat missions, which is the heart and soul of the game. Adventure Quest is known for its wide variety of monsters with a wide variety of attributes and characteristics. Of course, there's the Moglin, the arguable mascot of the series, but many of them are laid out in the short-lived card game, which, oh my god! 469 shipping. Luckily, a friend of a friend, Negative Legends friend, lent them to us to take a look at while we were out in LA. So take that, UPS. And we're trying to collab about Adventure Quest right now. And there's nowhere except for an open space next to the elevator. There's nowhere to do this. I was just assuming we split the deck in half and then shuffle it and hope it works. Okay. Because- Oh wait, don't, don't, don't do that. People are gonna murder you for shuffling like that.
buddy's gonna see this. The person who sent lent you these likes. Yeah, super... no, he does this all the time. It triggers me, so oh I don't care. God. Whoops. Hey, that's Comic Sans. So, Adventure Quest is a Flash game, and it definitely embraces, whether intentional or not, the Flash aesthetic. I just recognize the way these things look and move so much now. Between commonly used gradients, the outline tools, and even the movement, this was absolutely from the era of Flash. But there is a charm to it. The creatures do have a way of making me laugh and a genuine appreciation for its messy absurdity. Like, the, his, his artistic skills suck. It's supposed to be a pen that's... That's that was drawing something, and they literally had a draw your own weapon card like. Oh it. my gosh! Wasn't there? Wasn't they having? This a is top tier, derpfish. While doing some research for this, I came across a review from 2005 from OMGN, which one? You broke Google AdSense rules. You can't ask for people to click on your ads, you grade A dork. But also, it referred to the game as a lunch break kind of experience, and I couldn't agree more. Most quests take less than 20 minutes to complete as it's just fight after fight with only a little bit of dialogue in between. But even the larger story-based missions like the Devourer Saga, the first major storyline published, breaks the story up into chapters which are divided up into parts, which all take like 10 to 20 minutes each. But of course, everything is level capped, so I can't get too far into it. Plus, the very hungry zombie keeps wrecking my shit. Like, how am I supposed to do this? Dividing quests up like this also makes it easy for Adventure Quest's promise to bring new content every week a little bit easier. But surprisingly, there is a lot of content in this game. Part of the fun is exploring the world, seeing new bite-sized location, mini-games, but also customizing your character with huge variety varieties of armor, weapons, and pet combinations. Pets can also be bred for more personalized companions. This is my character, Owochan 2. Of course, the namesake is for Owochan, my original Gaia Online character, but there are so many combinations and each battle is kind of exciting because each enemy has unique attributes and stats to overcome with unique weaknesses that you have to cater your attacks to. But I, I, I basically just bought whatever did the most damage and kept switching out until something worked. I'm not one one for reading. Sometimes I use the Devil's Bane Sword, the Victory Sword, or this one that changes attributes every turn. Oh, also my wolf friend here is sometimes substituted for my Griffin of Justice friend here. While the customization of characters is fun, I truly do find the questing to be very repetitive, but it is supplemented by the crazy variety of creatures. There's the Tadzard, who's really doing its best, the Vampire, which is Gaia Online's brand in one image. Oh, jeez, it's Jimmy the Eye. <laughs> I love the naming convention. It's really great. They added a lot of, uh, they made the game fun, even if it's not really that good. <laughs> Jimmy the Eye. <laughs> Jimmy the Eye. Uh, is this Victoria's new secret armor? Ha <laughs> ha that's not that funny, but that's it's- That's a retail reference yeah. right there. <laughs> I like I like the stone in the sword. The stone in the, the sword. The stone in the sword. Oh, that's clever, that's cute. And my personal favorite I encountered, the Selkie, which is this disgusting seal creature. It looks like Poplio's evolution of Poplio was a Digimon, I hate it. But on second thought, I've come around to it and I love it. It knows the turn-based action can get annoying, so there's plenty of little jokes and commentary throughout. Oh, ugh, ugh, I hate it. Hey, aren't those the Hashira or is that class 1A or Hashion? Anyways, what I'm trying to say is I would definitely watch that anime. There's Rabina Hood, my best friend. Altai, who definitely wants to be my best friend. Stop. And the game's poster boy, Artix Von Krieger, AKA Vanilla Protagonist. He plays Smash Bros with no items on and thinks Missionary is quite exciting. I'm not gonna comment on the story because I haven't followed this game for literally a decade and a half like many players have. So I don't really understand how the story has unfolded throughout the years, but the overall gameplay structure is fitting for those lunch breaks like we mentioned earlier. It is not meant to be played for hours and hours on end like I had to do. Let's be real, I get bored by repetitive turn-based combat. 
I don't mind exploring a world and having to try to avoid or navigate it with combat acting as obstacles, but I always avoided things like the battle tower in Pokemon because I wasn't into it. This is the battle tower with more interesting dialogue littered throughout. That's all it is. I mean, it's more than that, but that's all it is. <sighs> you know the worst part? of a turn-based combat game is quickly realizing that you're gonna lose the fight and you can't run. So you just have to sit there and let it play out when you know it's only gonna end with you losing. So you just turn after turn, wait for that health bar to be drained, and then you die and you meet the boatman. Hello, boatman. At the end of the day, Adventure Quest kind of is a proto-mobile game kind of experiences. There was even microtransactions, and dare I say, macrotransactions. As well, it's not necessarily pay to win, there is a Guardian program that you could buy into for about $20 or $25. Having the Guardian program grants you access to Guardian-specific locations, missions, and weapons. Oh, and this dragon who occasionally comes to stomp on the enemy. Look, this isn't pay to win per se, but if I could have recruited like Pete Rose to my little league team, I probably would have won more games. That's all I'm saying. But the biggest, oh my gosh, of the Guardian program was that it was used to give you server priority. Meaning unless you paid the Guardian fee, you probably wouldn't have been able to access the game at all during peak times, unless you waited and waited. However, this access perk was removed in 2010, but in 2005, they also added a microtransaction system involving a premium currency. While you earned lots of gold by just playing the game, you would only occasionally earn Z tokens. Have you heard this before? Which of course could be bought using real world money through credit cards or in-store gift cards that used to be able to be purchased in stores that used to exist, like Toys R Us and GameStop. I say used to for GameStop just to future-proof this video. I really miss retail stores. Once again, just future-proofing. The reason why I find this interesting is because so many people fondly remember Adventure Quest, but those same exact people clown on mobile games. So it's going to be interesting to see how people who grew up with mobile games remember them. I'm not predicting anything, I'm just pondering. While the original Adventure Quest is fondly remembered by degenerates like me who liked the internet when it was a total wasteland, the brand has actually successfully continued to this day with a dedicated fan base, merchandise, and spin-offs and sequels. There was the sequel Dragon Fable, a story set in the far future Mech Quest, Adventure Quest Worlds, which took the concept and brought it into the world of MMOs. And recently, we've had Adventure Quest 3D, which is currently an open beta. And there was merchandise like the card game. Oh my god, that's a steal! Kimberly of One Eyed Doll says, let the face melting commence. One Eyed Doll is an actual band. Oh. Yeah, they got another person in the cards. It's the win it, button? The win button. It's literally, like you literally- Oh my god, is this like a meme game? Is yes. this like a Cards Against Humanity thing? Basically. Oh. Like you literally, that you literally have to- so much sense. The moment, the moment you draw the win button, you have to put it down. You actually have to press the win button. Yeah. Oh God, oh geez. This, I, that, that was a flashback. What? Another enhancement at neon Oh my speed. gosh. Yeah, I it, hate that. It's a, I know, it's very gross. And by that, I mean, I've turned around on it. It's quite good. And recently we got the Kickstarter for Dungeons and Doom Knights, an 8-bit NES homebrew taking place in the Adventure Quest world. So while many people recognize the original Adventure Quest as a bit of an adventure mess, the continuation of the brand has allowed people to look back on the original as just a first attempt, rather than the game that paved the way for every single mobile game people hate today. What I'm trying to say is Adventure Quest you lost, we still have our king. Oh, oh, it's oh, wow, let me see this card. Raveland's Armor Closet, wow. Love ourselves a barbarian buff girl. That is my type. And I don't have a type. That's a type. That counts as a type. Well, I- You I, don't I, have an exception. The, <laughs> yo, <laughs> it looks like, yo, barbarian buff girls. <laughs> yo, pass that shit over here. Mmm, <laughs> that sexy Adobe Flash. Stop. MS Paint artistic oh, yeah, vision. It's got that Newgrounds 2008. It does, that's cause it is. 